Let's talk about Pi. And yes, we're definitely using Pi for this one. Time for some real number magic. So let's take the fraction part of Pi. We will ignore the 3 and just consider the digits after the decimal. Let us note down the first 10 digits for the first row. Continue with the next 10 for the second row, next 10 for the third row, and so on. Think of creating a kind of infinite stack of digits of pi, a column that never reaches the bottom. Let's call it the pi pillar. For the next pillar, we will make a sequential set of digits. The first row will contain only zeros. The second will have nine zeros and a one. The third will have two at the end, then four, then five, and so on until we list all of the arrangements of the digits until finally we end up with a row of 10 nines. This all together will give us 10 billion rows and we will have a sequential list of every possible combination of digits from 0 to 9 that can be put into a row of 10 digits. This is our second column and it is finite. Let's call it pillar B. B for billion. As you can see this gives us two pillars, one finite and the other infinite, both consisting of rows of 10 numeric digits. Some of you might already sense where this is headed, so let's buckle up, things are about to get interesting. We can easily see that the first row from the pi pillar will match one of the rows in pillar B. The same goes for the second row, it has to be located somewhere in the finite column. Same goes for the third row, the fourth, and so on. Every row from the pillar pi ends up matching a row from pillar B at some point. Somehow all the infinite digits of pi have to fit. After all, every set of 10 digits exists in B. I myself find this super cool. Almost a mind blow. Almost. But let me ask the big question, the reason for this video. The question is, will all of the rows of B eventually match with some row of pi? Or will there be rows from pillar B that will never match pillar pi? Let's for example try to picture this with just the 10 zeros. I do not know of a situation where someone proved that pi contains a sequence of 10 zeros. But how do we prove that it does or does not? And if it does, how do we know that it matches one of the divisions of the rows? What if it starts at some row, continues for the next row, and then never again occurs? And finally, at what point do we even run out of the different combinations of mixing the different rows? What does it even mean to have an infinite number of combinations? What if you make the rows shorter, say only containing 5 digits? Or what if you use some other irrational number, such as e, the golden ratio, or square root of 2? Well, I hope you all have a wonderful time thinking about this fascinating, oh, I don't know what to call it, a paradox, a numerical correlation, puzzle. If you think you have a solution or a suggestion of some sorts to any of these questions, feel free to write it in the comments and do check out my other videos. I sure hope you had a fun time watching this and thank you.